This meeting is being recorded. <laughs> oh, all righty. Uh, good evening. This is Greg in 4KGL. You're not sharing. Oh, there you go. I'm pretty excited about uh, field day this year. Uh, I'm going, I've got a little about uh, our field day. from the beginning. Well, this is uh, uh, my plans. Uh, actually, uh, Rick, NZ2I, and myself are planning a field day, and uh, we'll uh, uh, walk through that uh briefly and then we'll get to some uh networking stuff uh, for logging that uh i found pretty interesting and uh, so we're going to be at campsite 33 at east bank camp ground in georgia on lake seminole and <clears throat> if you look carefully in this picture this is actually a picture from winter field day, which was six months ago. So if you look at this picture, you'll see a hex beam um, here, and you'll see some supports that uh, uh, supported a uh, 80 through 10 NFED. Um, and of course, here's uh, my trailer and we had a little uh, shelter, uh, uh, which we had the panels on here, but for uh, June field day, the uh, panels <laughs> will come off because it's the opposite weather. It's gonna be really hot, I imagine. Um, all right, well, uh, why do I like campsite 33? Well, on the right, you can see that there's some green space, enough green space to handle a 132-foot uh, uh, NFED uh, that will work on 80 through 10 meters. And uh, there's also enough room uh, between the two uh, trailers here that um, to put a hex beam. So I got a little picture there where the hex beam would go. And uh, for those in Dothan, uh, we're about an hour away from Dothan. Uh, we'll be about an hour and a half from Panama City or maybe a little more. Uh, this is what it looks like at sunset and what could be more beautiful than a hex beam and, and a sunset over Lake Seminole. And um, I've talked myself into using a QRP, uh, which for field day is five watts. Um, and to say it in a simple way, uh, two QRP CW contacts equals five 100 watt CW contacts. So ARRL uh, is very generous. Uh, there's a factor of five brewing in there. And um, uh, two mm -hmm. QRP CW contacts would be equal to 10 100 watt phone contacts. So <clears throat> uh, that's kind of motivator. Uh, you know, you may make less contacts, but your score. So if you're interested in the score, <laughs> And I think it's particularly attractive if you're going to use CW, then um, um, uh, you can make fewer contacts, but still have a good score. Uh, a digital counts just like CW, so that would apply also. So these ratios would still apply. Uh, uh, running QRP should take less battery capacity. Uh, 
if you're using batteries and uh, reduce interference, uh, particularly if, you, obviously, if you have more than one station going uh, QRP. Probably uh, uh, less potential for interference. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, Rick and Greg, uh, this is a particular class for uh, field day. It's Bravo battery. Uh, it, it's one or two people as opposed to uh, the A class, which can be three or more. Uh, this is one or two. And they do separate out the scores by whether it's a one or two person. Uh, two transmitters, um, five watts or less. And uh, uh, I've got a couple of hefty uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, uh, solar panels. I mentioned two antennas, the Buddy Hex, which covers 20, 15, 10, and 6. And the My Antennas Infed. Well, let us get on 80 and 40 as well as 20, 15, and 10, should, should we want to. And um, uh, logging, I'm looking at using N1M Logger Plus. Uh, I will say that you don't have to use software to log. Uh, ARRL has paper log. Um, it might require Depends what you do with it. Uh, it might require a little extra work if you do it on paper later. But but if you don't have a huge number of contacts, it's doable. I've done it on paper. And my fallback, if all this software doesn't work at field day, <laughs> uh, my backup plan is uh, a paper log. Uh, I just happen to have two Toughbook laptops and then I said, well, you know, um, I've always heard about networking two laptops together. Uh, well, maybe I should try that. Uh, I've always been afraid to try it, but uh, this time uh, I have a little time to test it out. Um, there's another twist to this. Uh, I do have a multiplexer called a quadplexer that would let uh, Rick and I work on the same antenna at the same time, but different bands. All right, getting to the networking. Um, so let's say you have uh, two transmitters. Of course, uh, this really wouldn't apply if you just had one transmitter. But if you had two or more transmitters, um, you may want to um, uh, uh, log <clears throat> in a network fashion. Um, uh, it can help with the dupes. Um, and um, also you can get your statistics, how you're doing at any time. Um, particularly, um, <clears throat> so it gives you pretty much all the capabilities a logger has, um, but um, uh, it integrates the contacts for the two um, transmitters if you have two, and then, you know, it would be similar for three, four, and five transmitters. Well, anyway, um, N3FJP uh, uh, supports that concept. So does N1MM. And um, I decided to take a look at using N1MM, and I was uh, very surprised by how easy it was. OK, well, um, now. Uh, the purpose of the multiple computer networking is to support logging of QSOs, so multiple computers. Uh, this is accomplished with application-defined data replication. Now, this is for N1 
MM. Uh, N3FJP, uh, I haven't done it, but I understand there's a one, there's a database that is uh, shared. So that database would likely be on one computer, uh, but N1MM um, does it differently, which is the second bullet. Each computer will have its own copy of all the QSOs and N1MM plus will synchronize the data so that it's the same on each computer. Um, so uh, N1, N1MM is kind of oriented toward contesters and they say uh, that uh, perhaps uh, this replication approach would be better than a single database. Are you saying Field A is a contest? Uh, field A is not a contest, <laughs> but it is a contest. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> I got it. I got it. Okay. All right. Well, this is out of the documentation for N1MM, and you can read that. And uh, <clears throat> uh, what amazed me was that it doesn't matter what kind of network you're on. It could be wireless. It could be Ethernet. Uh, <clears throat> it could be connected to the Internet but it doesn't have to be. Uh, so uh, I have two laptops, so um, I'm just using a crossover ethernet cable between the two laptops. So my networking is just an ethernet cable. Um, now, <clears throat> so um, I, I don't really require the internet per se, although I'll mention it, probably a good idea to start off maybe with my um, hotspot on my phone, uh, just to make sure the timing, the time is right and various things. But, but when it comes down to it, uh, you could just use a crossover ethernet cable. <laughs> Uh, happens the two laptops have Ethernet plug on them, a jack, so that was good. I uh, won't go through this, uh, but they uh, really, uh, for this to work, the uh, software configuration on each computer needs to be identical, the same versions, the same setup, the same contest and on down the line. And this is just all the details to make that happen. So there's a little, little bit of work here, something you have to watch out for. Um, now, <clears throat> well, uh, this is uh, on the patio here. Uh, so here's the uh, radios, the two laptops, the power supplies or the battery boxes. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, I plan to use the ICOM 705, uh, mainly for CW. And it's connected to the laptop on the left. On the right is the ICOM 7100. Um, it's probably going to be digital, uh, either PSK31 or FT8. And it, over on the right. And there's a red cable that's connecting these two laptops together. Now, so so they both see the same thing. They both they both see everything. Is that where it well? Works? What is really cool is that no matter what kind of network you're on, if the two laptops are in the same subnet, in other words, if their subnet mask is the same number. And it's usually 255, 255, 255. The uh, uh, laptops will see each other. So uh, each program discovers the other laptops that have the same software on it. So they copy each other back and forth as far as the data is concerned? Right, right. Oh, okay. They do so it. 
does it identify it as the other laptop's data or it just mixes it, it all? It together? does, and I, I'll go to a screen for that. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Are both those are both those yours? Yes. You've got two tough books. Okay. Well, there's a story behind that. Okay. I'll tell you all later. Right. <laughs> but right. now uh, uh the beauty of tough books is the screen, you can read it in sunlight. You can read it in any old time. Uh, 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 so, uh, you know, there's some trade-offs. Uh, I don't have to use tough books. Uh, you can have a mix of computers. And in fact, they talk, if talk about you can have a hot spare, you can have a third computer set up. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but anyway. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so uh, this is a picture of the screen on uh, one of the computers. And <clears throat> the bottom screen is what you usually see with N1MM. Uh, it's where you would put in the call sign and the class and the section, and it would go in the lock. Well, uh, and the screen right above that, the wider screen is where it shows you a list of the context. Well, when you're uh, uh, networking, it shows you your contacts and contacts made by the other computers. And this is just some uh, dummy test data. Uh, uh, one thing I came up with is to call the com to name the computers <laughs> the same as the rig I'm using it with. So this was actually on the uh, uh, this software is hooked up to the ICOM 705, but it's showing um, that the first contact this list was actually. Uh, from the ICOM 7100. And also it says uh, Rick in, you know, he wasn't here, but I faked it. So NZ2I made that contact. So, so we'll know what rig made a contact. We'll know what operator. And then all your usual information is here. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, there's a lot of cute stuff I probably won't use. Uh, you can send the other operator messages. You can do all kinds of sophisticated things. Now, uh, the window at the top uh, shows you what computers have been discovered. And in this case, there's just two computers. So uh, it discovered that the 7100 was hooked in, and uh, so it gives you the status. And it will tell you what frequency it's on. Now, do you have to have all that information? Uh, no, but this lets you know, and if that, if something happened to that other computer, it will show it in red, you know, it give you some hints that Maybe there's something to to do. So well, it does. I, yes. If I interrupt a sec, yes. we, we were doing winter field day without this software. And quite often, even though we were four feet apart, it was like, okay, Greg, what are you on? Are you on 20? Are you on 40? What are you on, Greg? And right. Chris, what are you on? And 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 yep. this would solve that problem right there. It's on right. your screen. Right. So and, I, I I see that as quite a benefit. And we could have done this in winter field day, but I was scared, Chris. I was scared. Well, I, I've done N1MM <laughs> on two field days, and it is a more powerful program than yeah. the N3 one. But it, I did uh, some some research, and apparently the – now, again, it's not a contest, I know, field day. But the contesters, uh, I would say, I think it's something like 80 or 90% of them are using this software. Yeah. This logging software. Of course, there is even other software that yeah. contesters use. But yeah. this, this this one's very popular. This is the main and, one. And I have to give them credit that they made this networking. So all I had to do was turn on the computers. And since they were on the same subnet, they discovered each other. 
and away we go. And I didn't have to particularly set up, you know, go through a lot of Windows settings or anything like that. So it's sending packets to keep these computers synchronized. And when, you know, when if I add a contact, it it practically instantly shows up on the other computers. In this case, just one. So well, anyway, now, if you haven't used N1MM before, uh, you know, you might want to get some experience with. So I'm not telling everybody to go use N1MM. <laughs> but if you, um, uh, I think, like I say, I was scared to do this part of it. So you kind of gradually work into these things. And uh, N3 FJP is an awesome program. It's probably easier to catch on to, and it yeah, would be perfectly fine. Yeah. yeah. So now I have another slide. Now uh, you kind of have, you know, a problem it's not insurmountable. In fact, Chris told you how to handle it. But uh, when you're doing like a, a FT8, uh, you know, those contacts are in one log and you might be doing sideband and those contacts would be in the N1MM log. But uh, 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 N1MM has a way to handle digital modes where uh, you base you basically tell N1MM where the executable uh, exists on your computer. And then when you open up N1MM, it will open up the application like WSJTX. Or FLDigi. Or FLDigi. And it will, behind the scenes, it will grab, you know, your contacts and it will stick them in the N1MM log. So I'd also like to add that yep. if you make some changes to FL Digi, uh, let's say it's your favorite PSK software and are running N1MM in control of FL Digi, it doesn't alter, alter your regular FL Digi. So when the contest right. is over and you go back to FL Digi, your setting, your old settings to FL Digi are right. still there. The N1MM um, runs it, but it, it brings in its, its new yeah. parameters. So it doesn't botch up your regular <laughs> non-contest parameters, which is a nice feature. Yep. However, uh, when you bring it up for, you know, initially uh, with N1MM, you need to go in and check your settings to make sure they, it's a, it's a different instance and yeah. it won't necessarily carry over all your settings. So you just need to go, uh, um, you know, uh, through your settings. And you would put it in the contest mode for field day. So. Hey, Greg. Yes. As far as using that type with two computers, when you're working somewhat, how do you handle dupes? How does it, how quick does it tell you, hey, don't work this guy, you already got him. Or well, somebody else on the other, you know what I mean? As soon as you type it into the box. So once you put that call in, it'll tell you right away, yeah. that's a dupe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Typically, your partner won't be on your same band or frequency anyhow. Yeah. And, it's just when and, you, you know, when you swap around, sometimes you come back to a band. Or he may work the band you've been on, and then oh, he yeah. may yeah. work the same guy without knowing. So he's got to be yeah. able to punch that well, call in to see it's a dupe before he works him. Well, that's an advantage in having everything integrated and everything together. Yeah, they're and, they're they're synchronized within seconds. Yeah. So you. Uh, the club here in Dothan is using N3FJP, and uh, uh, they'll they'll have success with that also. Uh, I hope I have success, 
but if I don't, I have the paper logs as a backup. <laughs> but it's working at the house, uh, so uh, I, I'm encouraged. Now, have you done have you done your FL Digi with it yet, Greg? No, it, uh, I haven't. So I can that... send you a YouTube video with a guy that that goes into that in great detail. Okay. And uh, it is it is a little bit of a yeah. learning curve. It's powerful, yeah. I, but it's not simple. I think even FT8, uh, there's, um, when you're using N1MM and FT8, um, there, you know, it. there's a few extra things that they give you uh, and that's a little learning curve. So definitely for FT8 and N1MM, uh, I'm going to look at the information, but I suspect it's a little bit of a learning curve. So, all right. Well, uh, as you keep doing field days and group field days, uh, it's a choice if you want to get into this kind of thing. I've avoided it so far, but I'm going to try it this time. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, and the bottom line is I was just totally impressed with how easy it was with N1MM. Uh, hey, any other uh, questions, comments tonight about uh, field day and, um, and the logging part in particular? All right. All right. Well, uh, I'm hoping everyone has a great field day. Uh, you can actually keep it simple. Uh, and uh, uh, that's generally a good idea. So, um, all right, 73. <laughs> Yeah, that was good. Yeah, I, I stumbled across.